Yo ninjas and Kaio and welcome to this new video where we're gonna talk about which is the best order to learn moves. One of the biggest problems for b-boys and b-girls is that they don't know in which order to practice moves. For example, they directly practice the windmill without even knowing some basics first. So which is the best order to learn moves? It depends from your goals. If your goal is just being very good in power moves but you don't care about anything else, it will be a little bit different than if you want to be a complete b-boy. I cannot tell you the order of the moves in each case because everyone has different goals, but in this video I'm gonna assume that you want to be a very complete b-boy. So I would start practicing top rocks and the basic footworks first. Basic top rocks I mean Indian step, Indian step crossover, salsa step, variations of the salsa step. For the footworks I would learn each step from the one step until the seventh step. If you want to focus even more on footworks, I would also learn the 8, 9 and 10 step. I really recommend learning each footwork step in both directions. Because when you start breaking, usually you still don't know which is your best direction to spin. So at first I would play with both sides to make sure to find out which is the best one for you. I would also learn some more footwork steps like the kick out, CC, Zulu spin and some easy legwork patterns like the regular pretzels the inside out pretzels and try to freestyle and connect each footwork. Footworks are gonna be very important even for power moves later on. So make sure you know how to do the basic footworks first and after that you will be more ready to practice some power moves like swipes or flares. After learning the basic footworks I would focus on back rocks, for example the kick out in the back rock position or the jump over and jump back in the back rock position. You can even do the jump over and jump back in the footwork position. Actually all the footwork steps that you learn you can try to do them in the back rock position. For example you know how to do the kick out like this, you can do this kick out in the back rocks like here and you kick. Same thing with the jump over, jump back. You can do it in the footwork like this. Jump over, jump back. And you can do it in the back row. Jump over and jump back. Same thing for the six step, for the three step. You can do the six step in a back rock position, the three step in a back rock position. So try to play with the back rocks like the same like in a footwork. When you have some back rocks, some footworks, some top rocks, try to freestyle and try to connect all these moves together. Now it's time to focus on some freezes. Start from the tire freeze, this freeze here. Also try to learn it on both sides. Then try to learn the belly freeze on both sides and then the side freeze on both sides as well. If you know how to do back rocks, you should immediately be able to do some shoulder freezes on both sides, because on the back rocks you rely a lot on your shoulders. So practice the shoulder freezes as well and try to combine shoulder freezes with back rocks and with other freezes. Try to learn some other basic freezes as well, like the headstand for example. Try to hold a handstand for at least 3 to 5 seconds and even an elbow freeze on both sides. At first, if you are a beginner, you don't need to hold the elbow freeze and the handstand for a very long time. You can just do an elbow freeze, for example, like this. And then go down. You don't need to hold the position for long. Same for the handstand. You don't need to hold it for a long time for the moment. Now you know how to do some top rocks, some foot rocks, some leg works, I mean the pretzels, some back rocks, some freezes. You need to know how to do some power moves. Start with the back spin, learn it on both sides. The second power move you could learn could be the hand spin. The hand spin is just spinning on your hand in a tire freeze like this and you spin around. This is a very easy move, you don't need to do it very fast. So maybe at first if you try to do it, it will look something like this. If you feel comfortable, try to make it faster and try to spin more and then lift up the left hand if you spin clockwise and just spin with the right one like this. You can also try it with the other hand spinning clockwise or you can try to with the other hand spinning counterclockwise and with the right hand spinning counterclockwise. So you can try this move in four different ways. I think this move is not so beautiful to see but if you learn it, it will be easier to learn some other moves like the windmill, the cricket, the jackhammer. Now you know how to do a little bit of everything. You know how to do two power moves, back spins and hand spins. You know how to do some freezes, you know how to do footworks, back rocks and top rocks. Really try to combine all these moves together before to go ahead. It doesn't make sense to learn so many moves if you cannot connect the moves that you already have. 
So be patient, master these moves first. If you learn all of this, you will have strong foundations and strong basic to learn more advanced moves. So once you master these moves and you master combinations between these moves, let's move on. For top rocks right now, it's time for you to try to create new steps or new variations with the basic steps you already know. There are not so many top rock steps, but there are so many variations of each step. You can also find on YouTube like 100 variations, for example, of the Indian step. You can just copy some of them and then try to create your own. Second thing, learn more footworks and legworks. Start with some other basic steps that I didn't mention, for example, the monkey swing, this step here. This is very easy to do. I didn't mention it before, but actually you can learn it pretty early. And also the reverse monkey swing. So this is the regular monkey swing. The reverse monkey swing is this one here. It's very similar, but a little bit different. Learn this as well. Learn some basic patterns. If you don't know what patterns are, I made some patterns tutorials. You can check them out on my channel. I will leave the link in the description. Try to learn some more legworks. I'm also gonna leave in the description some legworks patterns that you can learn. And try to learn some floor work. What do I mean by floor work? I mean some movements or steps on the floor by using your back, so kind of like back rocks, but also using your chest and your belly. For example, you can do a two-step on the floor in a floor work position. Instead of doing it in a footwork position like this, you can do it in a back rock position. So one, two, to spin, and one, two, and try to combine floor works with back rocks and with footworks and also with freezes or power moves like the back spin, for example. If you learn some back rocks, some floor works, some basic freezes like the tar freeze, baby freeze, side freeze, and very good back spins, the windmill will be very, very easy for you. So at this point, you can start learning the windmill. Make sure you know how to do some back rocks, some floor work, very good back spins, and very good freezes. If you don't know how to do them, learn these moves first and learn combinations between these moves, and then learn the windmills. If you can put power in your footworks and in your back rocks, you can also put power in your windmills. But if your footworks and your back rocks are too sloppy, you will have hard times learning the windmill. So, the windmill could be your third power move. If you can do a very good two-step and also a very good one-step, you will be also ready to learn swipes. So, swipes could be your third power move with the windmill or it could be your fourth power move. Number one, backspin. Number two, handspin. Number three, windmill. Number four, swipe. At this point, you should try to hold the freezes longer. So try to hold a longer handstand, a longer elbow freeze on the right elbow and on the left elbow. So if before your goal was just holding it for three to five seconds, now your goal is to hold an elbow freeze or a handstand for at least five to 10 seconds. Focus on some basic freezes transitions as well. Start with freezes at the same level. So for example, the step freeze level, try to connect tire freeze to baby freeze to side freeze and even to chair freeze. From the chair freeze, try to change side maybe, go to the chair to the other side and try to combine all these freezes on the other side. Try to combine them in different ways. When it feels easy, try to change levels in the freezes. So for example, try to combine shoulder freeze with side freeze, side freeze with headstand, headstand with elbow freeze or headstand with handstand. Once you have a better control over your freezes and transitions, you will be able to practice some spinning handstands. The requirement to start practicing the spinning handstand is to be able to hold an handstand for at least 10 seconds, being able to open your legs while you do a handstand and being able to control the handstand by walking a little bit. If you have a good control over other freezes like elbow freezes, headstands, side freezes, your handstand control will also improve. Why learning spinning handstands? Spinning handstands are gonna be very useful to learn 90s, reverse 90s, and also walkovers and vertical air flares. What to learn next? If you can do a pretty good spinning handstand, it's time for you to practice the first round of 90 and reverse 90. Oh, I didn't tell you before, but that at this point you should know which is your best direction to spin. At first, you practice everything on both sides. When you figure out which is the best side for you, you can just focus on one side mostly. If you are crazy and you want to be very next level, I really recommend you to practice everything on both sides. It would be even better for your body control, for your strength, for your flexibility and coordination. But yeah, let's move on. So at this point, start practicing reverse 90s and 90s. 
The goal is just doing your first round of reverse 90 and your first round of 90. If you want, 2000s as well. Reverse 2000s by leaning on the first hand, so one and two, or 2000 on the second hand, so one, two, and three, like this, how you prefer. But I really recommend to focus both on reverse and also on regular 90s or 2000s, not only on one of them. If you practice both reverse and regular, you will build a better control for your air flares later on. So at this point, you should be able to know how to backspin, handspin, windmill, swipes, and spinning handstands. And also one round of 90 and reverse 90. Try to start combining these power moves with your back rocks, with your footworks, and with your freezes. This is very important. Don't just learn moves by themselves. So don't just practice windmills by themselves and just stop. It doesn't make so much sense. But try to combine your windmills with other moves, like with handspins, for example, of with some footworks like the two step. So try to do two step to windmill, to three step, to windmill again. So really try to combine all the moves you can do together. If you learn some combination between the moves, it will be way easier to learn more advanced moves or more advanced transitions. When you try to combine your moves to other moves, really try to use all of them. So try to combine your, your windmill, for example, with all the moves you can do all the footworks you can do, all the backworks you can do, all the freezes you can do. Same thing for the swipe, for example. Try to combine the swipe with all the footworks you can do and all the freezes you can do. And also try to combine it with windmills, for example, with other power moves. At this point, you can start also practicing head spins. It's not a hard move. To learn head spins, you just need to have a very good control over your headstand. And if you have a very good control over some other freezes, it's even better. Because you should really be able to maintain your legs tight. Now it's time to learn some windmill variations. For example, the no-handed windmill, like this. If you want, you can start practicing some crickets or some jackhammers. And it's time to start learning flares. At this point, flares should be very easy for you because you have very solid foundations of footworks and of other power moves. Learning the first round will not be a problem if you know all these basics. Maybe doing multiple rounds can take some time, but don't worry, just keep practicing it. Try to connect your first round of flare to other moves or to other freezes. For example, do the first round of flare and go to a tighter freeze or do the first round of flare and then keep going with some footworks and also do it in reverse. So for example, start with some footworks with a six step or with a one step and after doing one round of six step, try to go into flare. So try to connect your first round of flare with all the things you can do and then try to learn more rounds. At this point, try to learn more advanced freezes, for example, hello freezes, inverts and hollow backs. If you are very inflexible, these freezes can take a lot of time, but don't worry, keep practicing them and you will get more flexible while you practice. Practice a little bit more also the one-handed freezes, like the air freezes on both sides, pike freezes by opening your chest more on both sides as well. You can start also practicing some other freezes on only one arm, for example, air chairs or elbow freezes with one arm only. You don't need to balance for a long time, you can just hold the freezes for like 2-3 seconds, something like this. Try to get comfortable with more freezes variations. If you know how to do hello freezes and you know how to do some windmills and head spins, it's time for you to learn some hellos. Try to combine the windmills, the head spins and the hello freeze together and this can become a hello. And if you can hold elbow freezes on both sides properly, you can start learning your first round of elbow track. After developing good control over the other power moves, windmills, flares, swipes, hellos, one round of elbow track maybe, one round of reverse 90, one round of 90, and spinning handstand, it's time for you to start learning air flares. For air flares, you have different ways to learn it and different approaches. I will leave a link in the description where I'm gonna talk about different approaches to learn air flares. It depends from your basics, from your flexibility and from other factors. I will leave the link in the description where I explain it properly. Okay, now I can still tell you what to learn next, like for example, air flares variations, other footworks, other more advanced patterns by using power moves as well. There is too much to say, so actually it's up to you from now on to take your own path. 
But once you learn all these basics that I told you, I think you have enough foundations to become which b-boy you wanna become. You know how to do some top rocks, footworks, leg works, back rocks, floor work, some freezes, some power moves. So you should be able to connect all of these things together. So at this point you should have strong foundations to try to build your own style. The important thing is that every time you learn a move, you try to combine this move with all the moves you learned before. Even if you learn just one round of this move. A very common problem that I see in most of b-boys and b-girls, they want to first master a move and then they want to do combos with this move. In my opinion, this is a little bit wrong. You should first focus on doing only one round of this move. For example, let's say that you're learning flares. Only learn one round of flare first. Try to combine this first round of flare with all the footworks you can do, all the freezes, back rocks, leg works, everything with a back spin, for example. Then, when you learn how to combine it with other moves, it's time for you to learn the second round of flare. Same thing with other moves, like air flares or other things. This will make your progress way smoother and easier. If you just focus on learning multiple rounds, it's easier to get stuck in this move without knowing what to improve. If you need more help for your breaking or your power moves, check out my Patreon link in the description. In my Patreon, I post exclusive tutorials that I don't post here on YouTube. And if you need to be followed for your progress, there are some coaching plans as well. If you want to support me, check out my merch, also link in the description. And see you next week with a new video. Yo, ninjas!